Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's always a blessing to the family and close friends when people show up uh, with their personal and physical support at times like these especially. I'm wondering, would you just bow your heads with me as we pray? Loving Father in heaven, creator God, we want to thank you for the gift of Mary Beth, um, how she has touched the lives of the people that are here and many others. We pray, Lord, that you will minister to us today with your comfort and peace. Bring us courage for those days to come, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. As Mary loved the Lord in church, there were four special songs that Marcella said that she uh, loved. And we're going to sing as, uh, as a group. And uh, the first, well, it says hymnal number 190, and that is Jesus Loves Me. And, uh, and you can use your hymnal or the words will be up on the screen. The second song uh, is Silent Night. And so uh, that'll be our second song. And then the, the third song that we're going to sing together is The Old Rugged Cross. And then later, uh, In the Garden. And, uh, and I'll ask you to sing... Uh, some of that with me also. So let's let's sing these uh, these beautiful beautiful hymns in in honor of Mary and how much she loved them. Jesus loves me, and we're going to do all for all of the verses. That's all right. I'm sure she would love that. <laughs> one is a silent night uh, hymn number 143 I see smiles on your faces as <laughs> yes, yes yes and it is a beautiful song <coughs>
beautiful, beautiful. 159, the old rugged cross. Yeah. <coughs> I'm going to read Mary's life sketch. First, I have two memories um, of Mary. One was here in church. She came and Charles was here. He brought her to church and she was just beaming. It was beautiful. Another time, I was at a potluck at the complex where they lived and Mikey got to come there for the potluck and she was beaming that day too. She loved her family very, very much. Will you bow your head with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time, and I just ask that you would bless, strengthen, and comfort and courage um, her family, her friends, and uh, especially my dear friend, Marcella. I thank you for that friendship. In Jesus' name, send your ministering angels, I pray. Amen.
When Mary and Rosa, her sister, who was really close in age, were young, they lived in many places. They lived in Walla Walla. They also lived in on a property down in Arizona in the desert. Sorry, I have to read this. One of Mary's favorite pastimes was to collect a jar, put holes in the lid, and go out and catch fireflies. <clears throat> and watch God's little creatures at night in the jar fly around. Mary was always known, even as a child, to be kind, caring, and thoughtful. One of those stories to illustrate is one day Mary and her sisters Rosa and Rita were jumping on the top bunk bed, and all of a sudden they heard a crash, and it broke, and so did Mama here. And Mama came down the stairs and was not pleased. She informed Rita she would now have to sleep on her mattress on the floor. And poor Rita was so sad, she was terribly afraid of spiders, bugs, and snakes. So Sister Mary comforted her and said she would take her spot and sleep on the floor instead. And Rita was so relieved and grateful. Another memory from Rita when we, our family went on a trip to see Grandma in Iowa. Mary was so kind. She taught me how to embroider with such patience. I think I still have the pillowcase with little red birds on it. Mary was raised Seventh-day Adventist. In high school, Mary attended Thunderbird Academy in Arizona. Mom and the little siblings came to visit her in the summertime. Mary worked in the cafeteria to pay for her schooling. The visit was so much fun. The dorms were closed and empty, so we enjoyed running down the halls. Great entertainment. We also got to eat in the cafeteria, and we were thrilled. We thought our sister was famous. Everyone knew her name. The blessing of a close-knit group in the academy. After Mary graduated from academy, she lived in a little house on the Arizona property behind the big house. A short time later, Mary and Charles were married and their family grew. Charles Jr., Chucky, and a little sister, Shalia, were born. In the beginning, everyone loved Charles in the family, but soon, very sadly, he left Mary alone as a single mother with two children. That was very hard. Sometime later, Mary met a nice young man who was a Seventh-day Adventist. Harold, and they were married, and this marriage lasted 40 years. Mary absolutely loved being a full-time stay-at-home mother. She was very good at it. She kept the house cheerful, and while they were driving, they would sing children's Christian songs and favorite family songs. How much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> they used um, to make such wonderful family songs, didn't they? Mary was so gifted. She sewed the children's clothes and loved having matching outfits sometimes. The children loved having matching outfits. In the end, her sewing looked so professional people couldn't tell the difference. At one point, they lived in Morton and Harold worked in the big sawmill. So he got to bring home free firewood and he built a very nice big playhouse in the front yard for the children to enjoy and I hear it's still there. Mary loved volunteering at Dorcas and Helping Hand Centers. She loved the idea of helping the community and others that were in need of food and clothing. A memory from Shalia. I was around seven or eight years old, and I remember going to a ladies group from the church. There was a huge quilting loom in the middle of the room and all the ladies sat around this large loom and they sewed squares on the quilt to give to the needy. Approximately two years after Harold and Mary married, they had Marcella and Melissa who were 18 months apart. Marcella has fond memories of her, of all the singing in the home and in the car, her mom making kids belt sets to teach them the Bible stories and to take them to church with them for quiet times. When Melissa was born, 
and about 14 months uh, years old, she had to have open heart surgery. The family moved onto the hospital property to a trailer for the whole summer. The hospital staff were wonderful and kind and let all the children come in the children's play area and play with the toys and games that were there. Mary had some complications in her health. She found out after she had Charles, Chucky, she was diabetic. That was in her 20s. When Mary was about 56 years old, she started having trouble walking. Later, she had a couple strokes and kidney issues. In the year 2017, Harold left the family. It was very sad, and Mary and Marcella became homeless. After a few very hard years, God provided a very nice apartment in Battleground, a safe area where Mary and Marcella could live and Marcella could help her mother. And they had a great church, and they loved their church here, and we're so thankful to have them. Marcella has many sweet memories of making jewelry and earrings and spending time together with her mother. Mary also taught her how to crochet, and she has taken that up now. Her mother also loved making baby blankets for any and all the relatives' babies. Mary was very sweet, and I'm glad I knew Mary. I know her family and friends will miss her greatly. Now I would like to read her favorite Bible scripture chapter, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. That was a close call. There we go. Um, I had a couple of conversations with Marcella, so I was able to get a bit of the life of Mary, um, but I need your help. Um, and so this is a time for you to speak up, your own memories, um, anecdotes, things that you remember uh, in your own life, uh, interaction with Mary. So who's gonna be first? Go ahead, the first one is always the hardest one. Who will break the ice? Good. Well, my mom, she always liked to help others. Um, we were always spending time at, even in Centralia, there was, uh, I forget um, what it's called, but the helping hands. Uh, we were always portioning up food and uh, clothes. And in, in Vancouver, years, she would sp always spend one day a week down at Dorcas. You know, and even as a child, that was the story of making the quilts. You know, we were always, she was always helping someone else in need. Even though m many times we were the ones in need, she was always helping someone else. You know, and that was where she was the happiest was reaching out and helping someone else, you know, so. Yeah, Mary. She, uh, 
she definitely loved helping people. Her hair, I did not get that from my family. Harold was my brother. Mary's hair was gorgeous. She grew her hair long enough, had it cut off for locks of love. A wig for cancer patient. She didn't just talk about helping people. She found ways to do so. I did enjoy her laugh. She could have a chuckle laugh that just kind of filled her all up. And you couldn't help but laugh with it. I also still have in my kitchen her crocheted dish towel. She crocheted the top of the dish towel, put a button on it, and I still use that. And that was years ago. So I am sad. But I'm also very happy because I firmly believe that Mary loved the Lord. And I firmly believe that she will see him come in the clouds of heaven. Really do believe that. I really do. Mary had a, had a wonderful spirit about her. And if anybody ever got her to have a wonderful little laugh or joke, you'd enjoy it with her. You'd enjoy it with her. She made wonderful. Was in the oven on a piece of bread, and it was mayonnaise and cheese and pimentos. Sometimes, yes, but it was also pimentos. She would put in this mixture, and she put it on the, and then she'd bake it in the oven. And man, that was just good food. <laughs> Wacky cake. Oh, you never knew what wacky cake was until you ate it. She was a good cook. I'm telling you, you could come out with some wonderful stuff from her, from her tang. The astronauts drank it, so she made some up. <laughs> she, was, she was a sweetheart, and she is missed. Thanks for that. Who else? I remember Mom used to make these little dresses for the shampoo bottles, the soap bottles, too. She made little dresses for the dish soap bottles and stuff. <laughs> she was constantly crocheting stuff, and she even made baby clothes to um, give to the hospital for the preemies when they were born. So they would have, like, little boobies and hats, and she, she was always crocheting something and putting it up. <laughs> I'll say something about the baby blankets. <clears throat> she made one for my daughter, and my daughter is now uh, 35, I think, <laughs> and she still has that blanket, and it's in knots now. I mean, she couldn't sleep without that blanket, and it's just a big knot, but she keeps it. And her cousin does, too. He's had his now for many years, and they won't let him go because that's their baby blanket. <laughs> Mary, I knew Mary before she met Harold. Um, and Chucky and my oldest boy are the same age, around the same age. And... It's so good to see Schlitz in years. I lost touch with her, and I was so thankful when my youngest daughter, and I think it was Shane, wasn't it, that co <coughs> connected with my youngest daughter, and I got the phone number from Marcella, and I couldn't see her, but I talked on the phone and it was on speaker, and Marcella said that she recognized my voice. I'll see her again when Jesus comes. 
I have to say she helped me in Sabbath school. She helped me at home, <coughs> cooking, sewing, crocheting, whatever, but making felts for Sabbath school. Is there somebody else? Well, you've really helped me fill in some of the gaps. Um, I had a couple of wonderful conversations with Marcella um, to get a sense of her mom, what kind of a woman she, she was, what motivated her in her life. The thing that kept cropping up in our conversations was how kind Mary Beth was. Kindness and a generous heart seems to be the best descriptions of a life well lived. She was never a wealthy woman, but she was generous. She lived by the credo, do unto others as you would have them do unto me. So she would give the Dornbecker Children's Hospital, give to them. She'd support the war veterans, uh, the animal shelters, and far-flung religious and missionary endeavors. She was quick to help others with food and clothing, when she was able to. She didn't have a lot for herself, as you've heard her family say, for herself and her family, but she was still constantly looking for ways to help. She volunteered at Hands Across America, uh, traveler information centers, as well as the Dorcas Society and the quilting circles in the church that you've heard of. She enjoyed cooking. Marcella remembers the spaghetti and the lasagna, homemade pumpkin pie, pineapple upside down cake. There was also, uh, these were some of the family favorites. She loved children. Marcella remembers that she would get down on the floor and play with them. When they would travel, she would get everyone singing, and I'm so glad that we did some singing here in her service. Um, Marcella told me that there's this song, I'd never heard it before, it's about the little worm song. Can somebody... No, I'm not going to make you sing it out loud, <laughs> but something about you lose a leg and you hop around on the other 999. It was a song that would, you know, one of these songs that would go forever. That song could get you from here to San Diego. <laughs> wonderful. That is wonderful. I love that spontaneity. And um, she would sing the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. Jesus loves the little children. She, and you saw it on the uh, pictures here, always had a smile on her face. She had a unique nap time routine. She'd make the kids crawl up behind her, legs folded, laying down on the back half of the couch to keep them safe. She taught her kids kindness and how to live, how to love unconditionally. Tragedy struck when she lost her lovely daughter, Melissa Ann Jean, at the young age of 19. She was married twice, first to Chuck Payne. They had two children together before that marriage ended, and then she married Howard Powell. That's what is written right here, and I mispronounced it. Thank you. And, and please shout out when I make a mistake. You can't do that on Sabbath morning, but here it's great. Now, Harold was younger than she was. Uh, she was 28, and he was 19 when they married. When they met, he was drinking and smoking, I'm told. Now, she told him that she wasn't going to be able to live um, with that in her home. It was a deal breaker. Well, this was a hard thing for Harold at the time. So, so what did he do? I love the story. He bought, he went out and bought a case of beer and a carton of cigarettes. He locked himself in the attic until the beer and cigarettes and 
uh, until the beer and cigarettes were completely consumed, and then he never drank or smoked for the rest of his life. <laughs> Is that true? Well, it must be true, she told me. Wow. Well, at least he was able to live through that experience. <laughs> Now, Harold told her that he wanted a lot of kids. Um, they had two children together. Harold adopted the, other, the older two children as his own. And then, unfortunately, that marriage ended in divorce after a long time together. Mary was, the only, uh, was only in her 50s when she began having strokes, first small ones that she seemed to be able to adapt to, and then um, one or two more significant strokes. Now, Curiously, forgive me that I'm smiling right now because this is not good news talking about somebody having a stroke, but curiously in the, afternoon, in the aftermath of these unfortunate events, um, it brought a sense of humor and levity into the home. And she could laugh at her own disability. Uh, she was drowsy when she came home from the hospital one time. She put a Bible on the ground and was trying to stand on it as she began to sing, I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. <laughs> Literally. She lost her memory about a lot of words after her stroke. The microwave was now a zapper. The toaster oven was now a warmer upper. She was trying to remember a, plink, a pink flamingo and so she said to Marcella, you know that bird that can stand on one shoe like you do? <laughs> this is before Marcella lost her other leg. Um, she worked crossword puzzles a lot to help with her memory issues. You know, the sting of death is the pain of loss. The fact that we can no longer be together with the person that we've come to know and love. That separation, that loss of companionship and fellowship, it hurts. As Christian believers, we know that that separation is not permanent. It's temporary. And we know that we'll be reunited with our loved ones on that bright and glorious morning when the dead in Christ shall rise. When Jesus returns to earth, he not only brings life, he brings companionship and connection with those that we have loved and lost. Mary grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist faith. Her church and her Lord were very important to her. The youngest of Jesus' disciples is now an old man when he writes these prophetic words. In Revelation chapter 21, Then I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. This idea of being with us, those whom he created, runs throughout the sacred scripture. In fact, clear back from the creation story in Genesis chapter 3, God comes to the Garden of Eden to walk with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day to be with them. But they apparently didn't want to be with him right then, and so we find that they run and hide themselves in the garden. Kind of stupid to try to hide from God, don't you think? A few chapters later, we discover that Adam's great, 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 great grandson, Enoch, is described as walking with God, together with God. God walked with Enoch. And so generations later, God is still interested in being with the people that he has created. In the story of the deliverance of God's people from Egyptian slavery, you remember this story, um, God tells Moses, let the people build me a sanctuary. Why? That I may dwell among them. So once again, God expresses interest in being with mankind. When King David, and I, I appreciated that scripture being her favorite, when King David composes the 23rd Psalm, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil. Why? Because you are with me. Isaiah prophesies the coming Messiah, Jesus, 
called Emmanuel. This is the name, one of the names of Jesus, called Emmanuel, God with us. And in the most beloved sermon of Jesus recorded in Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, in six of the nine blessings, the promises to the faithful are promises to be with God. John chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus speaking. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. In worship services right here in this room yesterday, we were reminded that in John chapter 15, Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me, he who is connected to me, and I in him will bear much fruit. So connectedness, this idea of being together with God, once again in the scriptures. And now again, in the final chapters of the Bible, the Apostle John, old man on the Isle of Patmos, there in one of the Greek isles, writes this, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. Now, I love a God who wants to be with me, whether I want to be with him or not. This precious promise that John writes continues in verse 4, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So that speaks to the question, will, be, will there be tears in heaven? And I have to answer it that there will be for at least a while. How do I know? Well, it says right here that God himself wipes the tears from our eyes. See, when Mary gets to heaven and realizes that any one of the people that she has loved and cared for isn't there, will she weep? Of course she will. And the God who knows her best and loves her most will personally wipe those tears from her eyes. He promises it. But it doesn't have to be that way. Every one of us can be there. Every one of us. I am drawn, by the way, to a God who weeps when I weep. I love a personal God who dries my tears. I am attracted to a God who does everything possible to be with me. I desire a resurrecting, life-giving God. And any God who was a close friend of Mary, Powell, is a friend of mine as well. That Bible promise continues with these words. Ultimately, there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. That is blessed assurance. Would you sing with me another song that was one of her favorites? And David will come up and lead it uh, for us in the garden. I come to the garden alone. Why? To spend time with our creator. And in your program, it has my name, but after listening uh, about Mary, Mary loved to have her family sing and to sing together. So let's all sing this a song together in the garden. Uh, again, one of her very, very favorite songs. <coughs>
bow our heads together. Creator God, you who gives life and gives life anew in the resurrection morning, we commit um, the earthly remains of Mary Beth Powell into your care. We look forward, each of us, Lord, to that resurrection mor morning when life comes again. And we pray, Lord, that in the meantime, that the memory of this woman will resonate in our hearts, that we may be kind people, generous people, giving people, and people who come to know and love the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, each of you, for coming. Um, there's going to be some music on the piano as we dismiss. And pollute.